This feature is made possible by Hospitality Mints, the perfect complement all wrapped up. And by Crawford Associates Incorporated, exclusive timeshare collections. Reporting from the Venetian Resort Hotel Casino in world-famous Las Vegas, Mando News presents coverage of the 2008 Arda Convention and Exposition. I'm Sharon Drexler of Drexler Communications and contributing editor of Resort Trades on behalf of Mando TV. And we are here with John Rogers Burke. Uh, Roger is an attorney. He's been uh, in the uh, resort real estate bu business for 34 years and is well known. Uh, Roger, I understand that your work is uh, m principally for non-deeded timeshare interests. So perhaps you could tell us a little bit about what you do. Okay, thank you, Sharon. Um, 19 years ago this summer, the founders of Trend West Resorts came to me and they wanted to set up a multi-site, non-specific timeshare club. And they knew enough that they didn't want to encumber their properties with individual deeds, but they weren't sure what to do. And I said, here's how you do it. You convey the property to the club in, the, in exchange for the right to sell voting memberships in the club. And so the members of that club have the same bundle of rights that they would if they'd been given a deed. They just don't have the personal exposure for liability for what happens on the property. And it's much easier to foreclose if they walk away from their timeshare. Well, we understand uh, particularly a lot of our audience is in the resort management business. And uh, it, foreclosures are horribly expensive. Uh, and I understand you've been taking a look at doing a survey or some research of some some type uh, along those lines. That's right, Sharon. For years, we have promoted the idea for the lenders or the sellers on credit that it's much easier to foreclose against a membership interest by sending a 30-day letter and saying, if you don't pay, we'll take back your membership. And if they don't respond, then you just cancel the membership and resell it. And finally, uh, we've been hearing so much from mature uh, timeshare associations that they have a great burden of having to go through a deed foreclosure to take back a membership that when people don't pay their dues or their assessments every year. And in some states, it's very onerous. In California, it's somewhat streamlined. It's maybe $500 a piece. But in some states, it's over 1000 to 2000 to do a, go through a deed foreclosure and it's totally unnecessary. If they had set it up with the world mark model of uh, the association holding title and merely having a membership, then they can do it with a 30-day letter. And the escrow companies tell us that uh, having processed thousands of these, nobody ever shows up. They've either died, they've moved away, they just want to walk away from it. And so it's much simpler for the association if they can just send a letter and say, if you don't pay, we'll just cancel your membership. Well, what about those associations that already have deeded uh, interests or deeded ownership base? Is there any hope for them, or is it so onerous that that uh, they just better push for uh, uh, doing the best they can? Well, one of the meetings the other day, I think it was Art of Rocky Mountains, they were talking about new legislation in Colorado to allow non-judicial foreclosure. So that gets them on par with California, where it's only maybe three to five hundred per week, uh, as opposed to forty dollars, counting the soft costs if you just send them a letter. Um, well, some of the things that the associations can do, and I've been preaching this for years uh, to audiences that just give me blank looks, is when they take back a deed to just hold on to the title and issue a membership. I've handled cases where even um, under the governing documents, they didn't specify that you had to use a deed to issue the timeshare interest, and so they, they didn't even have to amend their documents. On the other hand, association I've heard uh, last year there was a uh, workshop at the Arctic Convention on trusts, and they're really big in New England. They've used them for 20 years. Now a trust, a beneficial interest in a trust, is another form of non-deeded timesharing. Um, the only disadvantage to a trust is you have two layers of bureaucracy. And sometimes a trustee dies, or if it's an institution, it merges with another institution, and you run into complications there. 
And so I've never never been converted to using trusts. I just simply have the club hold the or the owner of the timeshare association hold title. Um, so it was a question again. I think I sidetracked. Well, I, I don't think so. I think you answered it very well because oh, the remedy uh, for those who uh, resorts that already have uh, deeded interest. Yeah, they they can hang on to the title. And last year in the trust workshop, that's what got me sidetracked on trust. The uh, representative of one of the major management companies said that's what they do uh, as a management company. Is when they take back a deeded interest, they just keep it in the association and issue a voting membership, which again carries the same bundle of rights. And it does, but it doesn't have the disadvantages of the foreclosure costs, and it doesn't expose the member to personal liability for what happens at the project. Well, that's great legal advice and free legal advice of con coming to you on Mando TV uh, from John Rogers Burke, Roger as he prefers to be called, and I'm Sharon Drexler. Drexler Communications on behalf of Mando TV.